What is really unclear today is the situation is unfolding where, as we have to give this guidance and is still actually in, a, in an escalation phase. So we have rejigged our network completely, sailing everything south of the Cape of Good Hope uh, and, and expect to do that for a while until we have really safe uh, passage uh, reopened in, uh, in the Red Sea. So this could be with us for a while. But we're also working uh, constantly with all stakeholders to try to shorten this crisis as much as possible and get back to, to normal trading routes. Mayor, uh, CEO there, Vincent Clark, talking about it. But Vince, let me talk to you. Vincent, excuse me. Let me talk to you about uh, that safe passage, that key word that you were just talking about. In terms of what that safe passage actually looks like, what assurances do you need from the global powers that be, from the U.S. military. We know that, of course, you were the first to stop shipping altogether, restart it briefly, and then stop again. What assurances do you need for that safe passage to manifest? Yes, I think, as, as you rightfully mentioned, we, we've had actually some serious attacks uh, that have led to having the current posture that we have, which is uh, really guaranteeing the safety of, of our crew, the safety of our assets, and the safety also of our customers' cargo. It is still very difficult for us to know exactly what the contour of such an assurance would look like because the situation is still evolving. We've not seen the level of, of threat actually peak. To the contrary, if you look at how the attacks have developed in the last few days, the zone that is under danger is, is, is bigger than it was. Uh, the amount or, or the range of weapons that are being used for these attacks is, is expanding. Uh, and, uh, and there is no clear line of sight to when and how. Uh, the international community will be able to mobilize itself and guarantee safe passage for us. So our, our perspective right now is that we are probably going to need to settle on the current routing for, for quite a few weeks, and we will need to continue to work dynamically with the stakeholders uh, that are providing the security or working on providing that security coverage to see when we're feeling that the prerequisite is there for us to get back to the normal trading routes. We hope that this is going to be as short as possible, but we also need... Yep to be uh, very careful in, in guaranteeing the safety of our crew. Vincent, good morning. It's Guy. Um, rates look like they've come up very sharply and are now plateauing. When this goes away, do they collapse back down again? What's the background demand picture that you think is the reality that you will ultimately be dealing with maybe in a few weeks' time, maybe in a few months' time? Yeah, I think what is really interesting uh, to see at this stage is despite all that volatility, uh, demand is actually holding remarkably steady. A year ago, we were in the midst of a destocking uh, or an inventory correction, especially in North America. This has kind of worked itself out. So uh, we are guiding on, on ocean volumes growing this year because of this low base effect from, from the beginning of last year, anywhere between 25 to 4.5%. So demand is remarkably steady. Uh, we don't see any shock or any repercussion from the Red Sea on, on levels of demand. What we're seeing is a need to reroute, use longer routes, uh, which, me which means in the short run, redeploying our, our assets. There may be a bit of touch and go in the, yep. in, uh, in, in the weeks to come. That's why prices have shot up in anticipation of this. But again, this is not a repetition uh, of what we saw during COVID. And we're certainly deploying a lot of effort to make sure that it doesn't happen.